Hey, welcome back. I'm Derek. Decided to do this again. Um, but I'm gonna do something just a little different. Um, tonight, I'm gonna read something. I'm not of mine. Don't worry. I don't have to change the channel that quickly. But um, I'm going to read an author's note from this new collection that I just got. And I'm going to first show you, show you the spines here. Kinda... These are the diaries of Emilio Renzi by Ricardo Piglio. Translated by Robert Kroll, I believe all three, yes. And this is from Restless Books. And I think it's going to be this volume just um, hugely important and sort of loved, studied, all that the next hundred years if they're you know if we get well if we don't you know kill ourselves not like like as a world um and i say that i have i've read none of it isn't that like i've read none of it i about to say that so i've read ricardo piglio um read target in the night which deep vellum put out and I've read some of his criticisms, critiques, uh, because he was a, a reviewer. He was of Italian descent, but he an Argentinian writer, um, lived, moved to Buenos Aires very young, I believe. Um, and I mean, and is clearly a, you know, Argentinian writer, uh, but then it was a professor at Princeton for many years and is a contemporary of Bologna's. And, and Bologna, right, is very, very, very sexy, like his writing and kind of his style and his persona. And so he's sort of the first of that post-boom um, Latin American writer, you know, crew to, to blow up, which makes sense. Like I said, because of the immediacy and kind of uh, sexiness of him. Well... Piggly is like right behind and by, behind, I, 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 you know, they were contemporary, but behind in terms of, um, I think the critical look at him and, and, and part of that that makes it so interesting to me is that, of course, I try to talk about books in a reviewy fashion like this, um, but also try to write, you know, so someone who pulled that off for so long in this way is obviously going to be like a, you know, somebody that I care for. Um, so there's that aspect, but here's what this volume is. So he started in 1957 writing a daily diary as a fictionalized version of himself, Emilio Renzi, and would switch between first and third person, it's not clear, nor should it ever be clear, what is the real, you know, what actually happened versus what's a device to either just entertain or to get a different point across. I mean, but, Imagine every day, like going and writing your diary, but always doing it at this other person. You know, so much of autofiction, and I think this will be compared in global literature in a way to Narsgaard, right? Because, the, I mean, his volume is much, much bigger. But, you know, Narsgaard is, is really sort of truly autofiction in, in the sense that it is the honesty behind the writing or the perceived honesty behind the writing that gives it 
at least partially it gives it some of its heft, some of its weight, or perhaps some of its initial draw, and then you're drawn in to the language and the story and maybe forget what first sold it, not, not just to you, because it takes a lot to get a book in someone's hands, even someone who reads constantly, because there are so damn many books. So I mean sold all the way around, sold from Narsgaard to that first reader, whether, you know, and then an agent or a publisher, however, and then to the world and all, all of that throughout that whole process sold as his story, my struggle. And um, I think what's interesting about this, taking that idea above and beyond where I think that's why this is something different and something very unique is that it's written contemporaneously as he's developing the author, Ricardo Piglia, his writing career outside of this because he becomes a writer, his critic career, which becomes he's far more famous for, and, and then his you know teaching and academic career at Princeton. But he, the, the entire time, contemporaneously, he's recording all of this, but using a third person and alter ego device so that so that he can create when there needs when something demands creation. I, I think that's what draws me to this. And I think it's embarrassing to admit like, oh, I, I've thought about it a lot. I've been interested in it, but I haven't read it. Listen, I don't have time to read it all yet. I'm, I'm ready. I'm going in. So tonight I started uh, the first one. I needed to take a break um, from what I was reading, from the recognitions. So I started the Diaries of Emilia Rinzi, and of course, I'm just like super primed to love it for all the reasons I explained. And I read, oh, let me say there's so the three volumes. There's the formative years, um, the happy years, so presumably middle, middle age, I guess that's where I'm at. And then um, A Day in the Life, which is the end, and he died of ALS in 2017, fairly, fairly recently. But he was he's 75 or so when he died. So full life. Um, and I decided I wanted to read out the author's note. The author, you know, in this case, um, being perhaps Amelia Rins. Well, it's written by Ricardo Piglia. Put it that way. Uh, but before I do real quick, I just, why? Okay, well, sometimes I just want to get on here and, and read because I really, really like reading out loud. And I was thinking before, just before I hit play, because I was super insecure about, you know, wait until you finished at least one of these. Like you're going to sit and like extol its virtues and then read an author's note. Um, but like you haven't read it, you know what I mean? Like be, it, whatever. And then I just like dropped it, dropped the insecurity part as much as I'm able to. And I thought the reason I want to do this is because I just read this and now I want to read it to someone out loud. And I remember when I was in high school and then right into the, um, not high school, it wasn't, that wasn't college for me, but high school and then not high school, right? I, um, I fell in love with this girl who would let me read to her over the phone. And I didn't read my own writing at all, I, I would just, whatever it was that I was reading, um, you know, I would read a little bit of that at night over the phone. We lived, we didn't live close or, you know, light by each other or anything. 
and I think back to that relationship and, and that was what I loved, you know, obviously very young, but like that, that's what I loved. I loved that, the intimacy of reading to someone, um, with my kids, of course, I love reading with my kids, but like my kids, the books are different, right? And it's a different experience. Um, uh, so I thought it might be fun. I thought it might be cool. I thought I might enjoy reading aloud. I don't know if this is cool with restless books. I know Ricardo Pigley is not going to care because as we've said, he's dead. I don't know if Robert Kroll is going to care. It is just the author's note of a extremely long set. This whole set cost me, uh, it was 40 bucks from restless books. You could buy the full, uh, Ricardo Piglia set. I actually believe it's going to be like legitimately like a fucking collector's item in like 30 years i think this thing is uh, I, I this thing is just special right it's like but again i've only read this i will i've only read by the end of this exactly what i read to you i'll have to note the time there's 11 minutes so i'll say the actual reading starts 11 minutes if you don't want to hear me be weird author's note from the beginning of the diaries of Emilio Renzi, formative years by Ricardo Piglia, translated by Robert Kroll. He had begun to write a diary at the end of 1957 and continued writing it still. Much had changed since that time, but he remained faithful to the obsession. Of course, there is nothing more ridiculous than the conceit of chronicling one's own life, he would contend. One automatically looks like a fool. Nevertheless, he is convinced that if he had not begun to write his diaries one afternoon, he would never have written anything else. He published some books, and perhaps will publish some more, solely in order to justify this writing. And so, to speak of myself is to speak of this diary, he said. Everything that I am is in there, but there are only words, changes in my handwriting. Sometimes, when he reads through it again and surveys the things he has lived through, it costs him something. There are episodes narrated in those journals that he has forgotten completely. They exist in the diary, but not in his memory. And at the same time, certain scenes that survived his memory with the clarity of photographs are absent there, as though he had never experienced them. He feels the strange sensation of having lived two lives, one written down in his notebooks and one in his memories. They are images, scenes, fragments of conversation, lost remnants that are born anew each time. The two never coincide, or coincide only in minute details that dissolve amid the confusion of days. Things were difficult in the beginning. He had nothing to say. His life was absolutely trivial. I liked the first years of my diary precisely because, at the time, I was struggling against the void, he said one afternoon in the bar on the corner of Aramis and Riobamba. Nothing happened in reality. Nothing ever happens, but it worried me back then. I was very naive, always looking for extraordinary adventures. Then he started to steal experiences from the people he knew, stories of things he imagined they experienced when they were not with him. He wrote very well in those days, as it happens, much better than he does now. He had absolute convictions and style is nothing more than the absolute conviction of possessing a style. There are no secrets. It would be ridiculous to think that secrets exist, and he would, therefore, gladly disclose the first ten years of his diary in this book. He included stories and essays because they formed part of his personal journeys in their original version. The publication of his diaries were divided into three volumes, one formative years, two happy years, and three a day in the life. It was based on the transcription of the diaries written between 1957 and 2015, not including travel diaries and what he had written while he lived abroad. At the end, he recorded his final months in Princeton and his return to Buenos Aires, so that this trilogy thus finds a rather classical way to conclude an extensive story organized along the succession of days that make up a life. For anyone who is interested in such details, he insists on mentioning that the notes and entries from this diary occupy 327 notebooks, the first five of which are Truffin brand and the rest of which are notebooks with black covers that can no longer be found 
from a brand called Congresso. Their pages were a light surface that for years drew me to write of them, he said. I was attracted by their whiteness, altered only by the elegant series of blue lines that summoned phrasing and prose, as if I were writing on a musical, musical staff or Freud's mystical writing pad. Buenos Aires, April 20th, 2015.